We can formulate an inferential test of the population r squared, the rho squared, using the sample coefficient of de determination, r squared. So r squared is the sample, and rho squared is the population. So we might get a, a, a sample of data and compute an r squared on that sample. And we can use an inferential test to determine whether or not the amount of explained variance that we find in our sample might be due to random chance alone, just because of the sampling error in our sample. So in other words, we want to know if our regression model accounts for a statistically significant amount of the total variation in the dependent variable. Does our sample statistic provide us with enough evidence to conclude that in the population, there truly is a good relationship between x and y. So we can set up an f test using uh, the traditional steps in hypothesis testing. The null hypothesis is always that rho squared equals zero, that there is no relationship between x and y in the population. The alternative hypothesis is that rho squared is greater than zero, in which case x explains some significant proportion of the variation in y. We can use the r squared statistic to formulate an f statistic. So this is going to be an f test, where f is equal to r squared times n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared. Rem recall that f is a distribution that depends on two degrees of freedom parameters. In this case, in simple bivariate regression, the numerator will always have one degree of freedom, and the denominator will have two n minus two degrees of freedom. Let's look at the values of, uh, well, let's just recall that the f distribution starts at zero and then goes to positive infinity. And in order to prove that f is, that the r squared is significant, we're going to have a critical value of f and our test statistic is going to lie somewhere in the values of f. And if it lies to the right of this critical value, if f is out here, or f test is out here, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis and say that r squared is significantly different to zero. So what's going to increase the value of f test? Well, first of all, we see that if r squared is higher, then our f test will be higher. Because here, r squared on the numerator, if r squared goes up, the numerator goes up. And if r squared goes up, the denominator, our denominator goes down. So if r squared goes up, we have an increase in the numerator and a decrease in the denominator. That's going to cause f to increase. Alternatively, if we have a lower value of r squared, f is going to decrease. So higher r squared is going to move f in that direction, and the lower r squared is going to move f in that direction, to the left. We also see that the f statistic depends on the sample size. It only appears once in the equation over here in the numerator. So larger sample sizes will lead to higher f scores, and lower sample sizes will lead to lower f scores. And that tells us that the same r squared, the same r squared, but when using a larger sample, all else given being equal, when we use a larger sample to compute our regression statistic, it's going to increase the likelihood of f being significant. So with a bigger sample, even if we have a smaller r squared, we're going to be able to say that that r squared is significantly different to zero.